several years, Gordon led a group that featured the legendary Link Ray. In fact, it wasn't until Ray sat in on Gordon's sessions that younger people ever heard of this rock and roll hero. All rock and roll guitarists owe something to Link Ray, who recorded Rumble back in 1954, and so became Pete Townsend's favorite guitarist. Link's professional reputation has always been far ahead of his commercial success. But now, with the revival of rockabilly music, we can expect him to enjoy public recognition as his older albums become more and more valuable collector's items. Rumble was a heavy metal tune 15 years before its time. Talk about Rumble. Now, what was that all about? Well, it, um, it was like a an auto show down in West uh, in uh, Virginia, you know, and uh, some kids were out there, you know, fighting, you know, and I just started playing it, you know, and it was with no title and everything. They liked it, you know, and so I went and recorded it, you know, and Archie Bly bought it. Now that was released on Cadence Records. Yeah, sold a million copies. Yeah, a little bit over a million. <laughs> and the following year, you you followed that up with Rawhide. Right. And uh, that combination of tunes has said to be by Peter Townsend of The Who to be the two of the best singles he's ever heard and put you in a league with the world's best guitarists. What was your reaction when you heard about that? Well, he was 13 years old when Rumble came out, right? And him and, pa and Paige, uh, Beck, and all those guys, they were little kids, you know, just learning how to play guitar when Rumble came out. And um, actually, Rumble was before Dwayne Eddy, you know, and uh, uh, um, I guess I was about the first rock and roll guitarist that they were listening to back in over in England, you know, and so they just took it, they was listening to my music, you know, Chuck Berry and all those. You know. So many people have said that they've been influenced by you, Peter Townsend of The Who, Jeff Beck, The Kinks, even Bob Dylan, I mean, what does it feel like to influence people like that? Well, if I just, I just, if I just had their money, it'd be all right. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, uh, it, it, it's, it's an honor, you know, it makes me feel good to know that they was listening to my music when they were kids, you know, even though they came up with giant stars, you know. Bob Dylan told me one time, he said, Link, he said, you're as big as I am. He said, all you need to do is get your sheep together, you know. Well, he's got his sheep together. I'm still trying to gather mine up, you know. <laughs> Why do you think you could never follow up the magic of Rumbles uh, from 1958 right through until 1979? Uh, who, who knows, you know. I mean, it's just one of those things, you know. Um, it was, I guess it was, uh, timing was right and everything, you know. Uh, there was a lot of teenage fights in New York. It was banned in New York. It was banned in Boston. It was probably banned in Toronto, I don't know. But uh, it was one of those teenage violent sounds, you know, and the disc jockeys had to, had to ban it, ban it because uh, uh, the citizens was against it, you know, and so uh, the papers, they were saying rumble, you know, with the teenage fights and everything. And it made it, it became like a teenage uh, uh, title, you know, and so... Uh, I don't know, it was just the timing was right on it. You could say, you could say it drew a cult following of yeah. a million and a half people, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Being in the music business as long as you have, when you see uh, bands like Boston, Blondie, the Village people who have virtually no musical background at all come out and become overnight superstars, what does that do to you? No, it just lets me know they got uh, good managers and good uh, lots of money behind them, you know. Uh, you can be the best musician in the world, but if you don't have a good manager and if you don't have uh, uh, the right the right uh, producer and the right manager and the right agency behind you. Uh, you can be the best musician in the world and not go anywhere, you know. So you have to have the good lawyer, the good the good manager, the good producer, and the good people to back you, you know. It takes a lot of bucks to make an artist, you know. And uh, I had only me and my music. Let's see, you're 49 now, you've been married three times, had eight kids, what's in the future for Link Ray? Another wife, another kid maybe, and a hit, and hit album gonna be able to rock and roll until you die yeah man that's it man you don't you know i mean you just keep it on playing music right you and chuck berry <laughs> me and chuck berry
Coming up on the new music, Rush. More from Robert Gordon and Paul McCartney.